All right. Yes. So uh, let's uh, begin. We left a question unanswered, which is, can we know God's will all the time? And uh, uh, I think no was what most of you said. We cannot know God's will all the time. Uh, let's look at a prayer in Colossians. Okay, Colossians is a letter or an epistle written by Apostle Paul to the Colossian church. Uh, so Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. Uh, if someone could read it. For this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord full pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay, great. So keep the mic with you Diksha. So here Paul is telling the Colossians to uh, pray uh, to pray that the Colossians will know the will of God in all things. Okay, so that they can walk worthy or they can have a life which is uh, worthy of God. So if it is not possible for the believers to know the will of God, then why is Paul asking them to pray that they should know the will of God? So it is possible for us to know the will of God in all matters but in reality maybe certain areas we struggle but is it possible to know god's will it is it is very much possible now you may ask the question how we, how can we find out or from whom can we find out uh, what god has in his mind so let's read one more passage this is 1 corinthians 2 verse 9 10, 16. 16, yeah. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have ent entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his, his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, hears the deep things of God. Okay. Uh, 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Hmm. So um, we said that it is possible for us to know the will of God. And now what Paul wrote to the Corinthian churches, he said, No eye has seen. No ear has heard. Meaning, it's mysterious. The good plans that God has for us. It's mysterious because nobody has seen. Nobody has heard. But you know what he says? That if you go on verse 10, he says, but by the Spirit. Verse 10. Can you read again, Diksha? But God has revealed them to us through his, his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, yes, the deep things of God. God, okay. So, these are mysterious things, the will of God. But God has revealed them to us through the Spirit. Because the Spirit knows. Verse 16, what does it say? 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Okay, so as you come to verse 16, um, Paul is saying, how can we know what God is thinking? We only know what we are thinking, isn't it? Whether we are thinking about tea or we are thinking about lunch, only God, God knows and we know what we are thinking about right now. Uh, who is the other person who can know that? Nobody. In the same way, for us to know what God is thinking, Spirit searches all things. Meaning, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, knows what God is thinking. So, the Holy Spirit, who knows the mind of God, or what God is thinking, can He not tell us 
what God is thinking? He can. That's the point. We don't know. God has all these wonderful plans for us. However, he has revealed them by the Holy Spirit because who knows the mind of God? The Spirit of God knows the mind of God. So what is God thinking about my career? What is God thinking about, you know, my home? What is God thinking about the ministry? What is God thinking about, you know, what I need to do, my assignment? God already knows. Holy Spirit knows. And Holy Spirit can tell us or he can reveal to us what God's plan is regarding any matter. Okay, And that is why in verse 16, what does Paul say? He even says, we have the mind of Christ. Meaning God's thinking, God's understanding, meaning about not everything. Obviously, we won't know everything. We'll only know as much as is revealed to us by the word of God as much as is revealed by the Spirit of God. Okay, So that much we can know. And in that context, he's saying we have the mind of God. Or in other words, we can understand God's plans for our lives. So all of you were wrong because you all said no. But the answer is actually yes. We can know the will of God for all matters everything that concerns us obviously it doesn't start with us because our understanding is limited but holy spirit can reveal the mind of god who knows all things okay so that is how it is and that is why we must understand what is the will of god so based on the will of god then we pray when we pray like that we are very confident because we already know that that's what God wants. So why will God say no? Obviously, he'll say yes. So pray according to the revealed will of God. Where is God's will revealed? Where is it revealed? Yes? His word. Okay. So the word of God or the Bible uh, is where God reveals his will. He reveals his purpose. So as I study and as I understand God's word, what's happening? I'm able to understand what is God thinking? What does God want? What is in God's heart okay, about various matters? And so praying becomes a little bit more easier because I know he wants that. Okay, I'll pray like that. I'll pray for that. And it begins to happen. So the word of God is the revealed will of God. But in addition to that, the Holy Spirit can also reveal to us. Now when the Holy Spirit reveals something to us, it will not be opposite to what the word says. It will be in line with what the word already reveals to us. So then we get an understanding about God's will and we pray according to God's will. And then what happens? We have the confidence that he hears us. If God has heard our prayer, it's like saying our prayer is actually answered. Because God even heard it. He has accepted it. So the answer will come. Pray according to the will of God. The next important thing here is pray with strong desire. I think I shared with all of us about the uh, story of that pastor who um, um, in uh, what Pastor Yonggi Cho and how he built or how he established his church. Uh, but in his testimony, he shares about the strong desire that he carried for church planting. And he says something like, how, how is a strong desire? Let's say we want to buy a mobile phone. We are thinking mobile, we are, you know, dreaming mobile, we are speaking about mobile because we have a strong desire. I need to get that uh, phone that will help me or whatever, you know. I'm just giving you an example. Or what if you're going somewhere uh, to, to visit on a vacation? You're always thinking, hey, I'm going there. It'll be a nice time with my family. It's, it's in your mind. You have a strong desire uh, for a, a time of rest. 
so we understand what a strong desire is it's not like uh, and this pastor when he shares his testimony he says when he wanted to plant the church he was he was you know eating drinking sleeping just that that's what i want to see that is the the purpose of my life the church and i uh, have to establish a strong church in this nation in this city so he was thinking about nothing else just that one thing that is strong desire but what if our desire is something like okay god if you want to give you give if you don't want to give don't give we never do that when we have to buy something that we like isn't it we do our best to to actually get it because we like it so much in the same way when we come to believing prayer our desire is important we uh, saw yesterday in the um teaching about faith where jesus says uh you will have what you desire or uh, according to your desire right so our desire matters and when we have a very strong desire first of all it should be god's will and then we must have a strong desire then what's happening we are setting ourselves up for a successful or a effective prayer which will receive an answer but if our desire is not strong uh, and we have a very casual attitude uh when we say revival for uh, uh, our nation if it happens in my lifetime it happens if it doesn't happen it does. that's not a believing prayer we need that passion right that passion that strong desire uh which says god i know your word says this i want to see it or make it happen let it happen so that passion and that strong desire is a part of um a a prayer which is effective and successful but we can have that uh, confidently only when we know that something is god's will okay so carry a strong desire the next one is faith and we've talked a lot about faith how we must have an inner certainty uh that it is in god's will god wants to do this for me i have a strong desire for this i have faith god will do it okay come on you know let's get into action action mode and uh, let's uh, start believing god these things will take place right so uh praying with faith and we have also seen how uh, jesus taught us to believe when we pray regarding something so let us read one passage matthew 21 and verse 22 uh, can we pass the mic to someone different please matthew 21 and verse 22 whatever things you ask in prayer believing you will receive jesus said or take questions okay whatever things you ask in prayer you will receive is that correct okay again i'll ask you whatever things you ask in prayer you will receive should i mark you for your answers <laughs> wrong so whatever things you ask in prayer you will receive is that correct sentence matthew 21 22 no why why no something is missing no what is that what is missing okay we have it here angeline says believing right believing so that is the key whatever things you ask in prayer what is the fill in the blanks believing you will receive so it's when we believe that god is going to do this that it actually happens we receive the answers um faith must be a part of our prayer and if we follow this process where we understand the will of god uh, and then we ask our 
requests then of course you know we are in a place where we are able to believe god we are able to trust him and when we have faith what will happen we will receive okay so believing is an other essential part of faith we there's so much more about faith that if we have faith then uh, we must not be passive or just say that ha i have faith and god will do it god will do it but we are active if whatever god wants us to do we are engaging in those matters okay so uh, when we say faith faith is not passive faith is active we must take action um, as well as declare and confess we've talked about that how to express the faith in our heart if you have faith in your heart and you say to this mountain so when we have faith we must also declare or confess okay so this is all regarding faith to have faith in our prayers so whatever you ask in prayer believing you will receive so have faith when we pray then of course continue with thanksgiving so i just want to uh, remind us of uh, this incident in elijah's life okay prophet elijah um you find in first kings chapter 18 that god gives him a word the prophets were the only people who used to hear from god back in the old testament but today all of us as believers if we um you know are baptized in the holy spirit then we can flow in the gift of prophecy however going back to the old testament it was only the prophets and the prophet elijah he is one of those you know major prophets when you read his life you read all the miracles the signs the wonders it amazes us that god can speak through a prophet in this way and work through a prophet in this mighty way so god gave him a word first kings chapter 18 and in that uh, uh, passage you find that he tells the king uh, it's going to rain okay but when he gives the message and goes back he notices there are no clouds what would you do if you were you were the prophet everyone's looking up to you you already announced you know oh, it's on news channels instagram facebook prophet so and so they have already said it's going to rain it's so hot no clouds no nothing what would you do resign <laughs> is that what you what a prophet should do thank god he knew something better he knew that he could pray okay so what elijah did is okay fine it doesn't look anywhere close to it's going to rain so he starts to pray and then we read about his prayer he has a, a servant or you know those days the assistants who's who is to assist the prophets were also known as sons or servants so he had another prophet with him he said okay go go look go look i'm praying so when he is praying he's asking to check why because he believes that god's word will happen so he tells the servant go look go look he goes and sees nothing he comes back and says sorry nothing did he stop no he prays some more and then he tells the servant go look so he does this seven times after seven times when the servant comes back and he says i can see something like a cloud coming up um in like like the fist of a, a man's hand a cloud as big as that appearing in the sky uh he says okay now time to leave this place because it's starting and in the spirit he says i can hear the sound of abundance of rain not not in the natural but in the spirit realm he knew the the rain is coming so what would you do if you know that is going to you know pour and you're outside somewhere run home that's what elijah did the rain had not yet started but in the spirit he knew his prayer was answered so it's an example of a believing prayer first is know the will of god god already told him it's going to rain in this case it's a prophetic word what does he do he starts to pray how does he pray with faith and with persistence another point here is um persistence persevere 
in in prayer persevere simply means don't give up so when he is convinced he has a strong desire yeah it's going to rain i'm going to see the fulfillment of god's word he doesn't stop just because there is no result he doesn't say okay pack up shop leave you know quit this place run away somewhere god's word is not fulfilled he knew the principle of praying persistently or again and again go back to god don't give up pray to god ask him and seven times he prayed and then it actually happened but also notice in his spirit or in his heart he already knew that it's going to rain so even that can happen to us when we are praying for something for you know in the right way we know it's god's will we have strong desire we have faith and we are regularly praying for those matters maybe at some point we sense it within us that god will do it i don't have to worry i've prayed so much i know that god will do it it's hard to explain how we know it but we can be very very confident so same thing happens to elijah he already knows it's going to rain so leave the place okay uh, and a similar experience can happen to us even abraham remember when we talked about the prayer of thanksgiving we said abraham um gave thanks to god or gave glory to god before he had the son why same experience like elijah he is praying abraham is praying abraham is waiting in faith somewhere inside him he knows it's done it's a done deal so give thanks to god yes god i know my miracle is coming you know i know my answer is coming i know my healing is coming i know my deliverance is coming thank you because you've done it thank you that you know it it is happening so uh in a believing prayer when we move on like this at some point we have the assurance that god is going to do it and we begin to give him thanks even before the answer actually comes okay so this is about a believing prayer any questions regarding believing prayer how to pray such a prayer and how to receive answers from god sister i have a question yes yes sister ketro yeah sometimes we uh, we pray and we ask things but believing like we we know that uh, we are right with god according to us and mm -hmm. still the prayers are not answered and we waiting for a long time yeah. then how do we know where we are wrong mm -hmm. okay so um sister uh, it really depends on how we have prayed okay and uh, more than how long we have prayed how have we prayed and i've shared right clear conscience um knowing the will of god praying with faith so all these things matter so if there's anything that may have gone missing uh in our prayer it could affect the outcome of the prayer okay uh, however if all these things are fine and still uh you know you are not seeing the result i would just suggest persistence if you're sure that that is god's will and god has spoken for so, so how long i mean uh, could it be years see it really depends on each prayer isn't it it really depends on each prayer and uh, god's promise regarding that prayer so uh, for some yes it could be years for some it could be a shorter time months or weeks um but for sister, example i just want to know may, maybe it is a, a no answer from god and we don't know could it be that no answer from god i mean it is not according to god but we still think it may happen and we keep praying um i'm not very clear sister could you kindly 
come again i mean we we pray but it has to be according to the will of god but uh, we may not uh, maybe it is not his will and we do not know that it is not his will yes so uh, what i'm sharing is if we are following this process that i i talked about in class hopefully we knew that it was god's will and that's why we started praying in the first place isn't it yeah but sometimes you may not know sister hmm. so it's when we are convinced that something is in the will of god that that we can continue to pray for it and if such a thing doesn't come through i think the best answer is to just wait and to ask for god's wisdom uh, on whether there is any approach that may need to be changed okay sister thank you yeah sure thank you thank you so much so in case let's say we are not clear about the will of god and then we are not seeing the results okay so in that situation yes maybe uh, at some point we can we can understand that it's not god's will and uh, you know pray for god's will that's what jesus did uh, in the garden of gethsemane we call it the prayer of consecration or the prayer of surrender when he was not sure as in in his situation he just prayed that prayer and said okay god let this cup be taken away but then he came back and surrendered his will to god's will and said that okay god whatever you want let that be done um so that is when we are unclear of god's will but whenever we are clear of god's will the right thing to do is to just wait and keep checking like what is what is missing in my prayer what's maybe i must um, you know um build my faith to a stronger level and keep waiting on god because you're sure that it's god's will okay i i hope um, that is okay with you sister getrude if you have follow up questions we could even maybe take it up um, um outside of this class yeah well, yeah well, sister the thing is you know i am waiting on a prayer request for my daughter Mm -hmm. something which was uh, wrong so that happened and uh, it is three and half years i nothing is happening there is no we are waiting on it so this is what the, my uh, question was like uh, is it uh, no from god or is it uh, we have to still wait yeah so the 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 part where we we need to clarify is if something is in the will of god or not and for that you can just pray and say god give me the wisdom give me the clarity help me understand uh, is this the right thing that we are asking for or should we change something in the prayer so when god gives us the clarity we can pray accordingly okay sister thank you okay sure thank you thanks uh, all right there are some questions on the chat i'll go to that okay at times god's delays might not be god's denials okay great uh, that's true and sanjay says uh, proverbs 11:14 where there is no counsel the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety so uh, sanjay are you saying uh, at times like this when we are confused we can also depend on godly counsel yes okay so when we are confused we can always you know ask someone who's in the lord who's strong in the lord and they can also guide us uh, about what may be um, off you know in that prayer now uh, going to daniel's question why does why uh, god doesn't say no when we are not asking according to his will why god doesn't say no oh um okay so why god doesn't say no when we are uh, when we are uh, not asking according to his will you you mean uh, daniel that uh, why doesn't god stop us from continuing in that prayer I is that your point uh 
because obviously if you don't get the answer to that prayer it's like god is saying no so god does say no by not giving that to us uh, because it's not in his will but daniel's question is why doesn't god stop us when we are asking the wrong thing i think it's our responsibility no uh he's already taught us he's instructed us by his word and if we are still you know asking him things which are not in his will he'll be like okay do whatever you want to do um yeah i think god gives us that responsibility daniel and if we are not um, re- sensitive or obedient then unfortunately we waste time praying for the things that god doesn't want in our lives okay uh the next question um if two farmers are there one comes and asks me to pray for rain so that crops grow and the other person asks me to pray for the sun so rain comes crops get destroyed so uh what should we pray how to pray okay so there are two people two farmers uh and both want the opposite I would say um what I would do is I would pray in the spirit I would pray in tongues in that moment because what we shared earlier we read from 1st Corinthians chapter 2 right verse 16 we have the mind of Christ the spirit knows the mind of God so the wisest person is God he knows what will be the right answer rain or no rain in this situation so I'll just pray in tongues and then i'll i'll be sensitive to what i'm receiving in the spirit and um, uh i'll pray quietly <laughs> so that sorry if they ask at a time if they ask at a time you see sometimes we have time to pray up in the spirit but most of the time what we can do is um i'll come to it later like when we maintain our personal devotion like every day Uh, every day communion with god you don't even need a minute you can immediately sense so if even if you don't have time like when jesus went jesus didn't pray for long he immediately said lazarus come forth so we can make a decision uh immediately too okay but uh wisely because others you get into trouble if you pray loudly god let it rain the person who doesn't want rain will have a problem with you and uh, the other way around so just pray quietly and get out of there <laughs> so that might be the answer okay great good question uh, any other questions about believing prayer there are some questions in our notes we can look at those um the first one says uh, if i have prayed and asked once for something is it correct if i keep on asking god for the same thing over and over again what do you think yes also no also yes okay so it's okay to ask god again and again however uh the the first few things about believing god's will when we have prayed in the right way actually you don't really have to pray again and again okay uh however sometimes our heart or you know um we need time to be assured like elijah he prayed seven times right because this is like a spiritual law that's how it works there are things in our lives where we don't get the answer immediately we have to keep praying because it's part of persistent prayer it's not that your first prayer was ineffective it was effective in general one prayer is enough in general however in some situations we need to pray the same prayer again and again and again because it comes in the category of persistent prayer like elijah where you have to repeatedly go after those things uh, and especially when we talk about uh, matters such as revival 
such as uh, you know maybe a, a a child in the home who is gone far away from god uh, it may take many prayers or some time before we get the answer so praying repeatedly in itself is not wrong it's it depends on why we are praying repeatedly if it requires persistent prayers then praying again and again is okay all right i hope that is clear uh, another question is does god always give us whatever we ask does god always give us whatever we ask thank god no he doesn't uh, because if it's not in his will he won't give it to us but if it is in his will and we make a believing prayer yes he will give it to us okay we are clear on that wonderful um what if i do not know god's will about a matter what to do okay we'll go back to the phone example now we want to buy a phone we don't know which phone which brand to buy which you know configuration to buy which specification what would we do research now for phone we research what about for our lives the decisions of our lives don't research on google <laughs> you can research in the bible right study the word of god so if i don't know what is god's will for my life what do i do study the word study to understand what is god's will so once i understand i research i find out okay this is what i think god wants we can even pray in the holy spirit we can ask for counsel from other godly people then we are convinced we are assured yes this is the direction for my life uh then go ahead you know start praying along those lines now let's say you have done everything and you're still confused what to do everything we've done research we have done we've spoken to people we've waited upon the lord but still we're like i don't know what to do hmm pray pray i can't hear you okay so now that you know everything and you cannot make a decision what what are you suggesting ask god okay good so that is what we should do after we've done everything and we're not able to conclude or decide we need to just give it into god's hands and say god i'm not able to figure this out you decide for me that's what is the prayer of surrender or consecration not my will yours be done whatever you are going to do god i'm okay with that you just take me in that direction okay so first of course we have to do our part of searching what you said research right searching out god's will according to the word what is it that i'm supposed to do so it's my responsibility that i have to search for god's will so i'll pray i'll read the bible i'll do everything now hopefully i'll know the answer if i don't know the answer i'll just say god i tried everything i don't know you do what is best in my life i will accept it okay so that is the way we go about um, you know praying when we don't know what god's will is in a matter any other any other points questions about believing prayer prayers being answered or prayers not being answered yes yes brother dedication okay um i didn't quite get you was that a question or just a comment it's a comment it's a comment okay dedication okay we need a dedication to see the answers to prayer fine mm, any, anything anything else along these lines
ओके यस यस अखिल सो व्हेन यू सी गॉड्स विल इन एनी मैटर एंड व्हेन यू फील यू स्टिल हैवन हर्ड फ्रॉम गॉड सो व्हेन इज इट दैट यू फील इट्स आइडियल टू जस्ट मूव ऑन एंड फील यू गॉट गॉट माय क्वेश्चन when you uh, seek yeah. god's will in okay. any matter okay. and when you haven't heard from god mm. and you waited upon okay. and when is it you feel it's little ideal to just move on knowing that uh, you mm. know for whatsoever reason best yeah so i think whenever you come to this point of the third part that i answered and i said that you know you're you're just in a place where you're saying i i'm just not sure i've done everything i know to do and i give it into god's hands and i think at that point it is okay to just move on yeah okay um okay there's a question uh, it says now if i ask god to use me in prophetic ministry but god wants to use me in music ministry but i am being um fast and asking day and night uh, does god change his purpose or plan for me okay understood all right so when it comes to ministry right um uh, there are many things we will discuss later but what what i would say is um yes we have a desire for a certain kind of a ministry okay uh, and maybe god has something in his heart for to give us as a ministry now how do we understand what god's plan is same thing that i shared earlier you just need to uh, research a little bit okay and uh, you can learn a lot about this in uh, fulfilling god's purpose for your life in that particular course because there are many pointers what are these pointers these pointers are the grace of god in our lives okay so uh, somewhere we recognize that this is the ability which god has given me so uh, i am just saying for example if i want to be in worship ministry okay but i can't sing i don't have the grace to do it so i need to be able to recognize the grace look at the grace that god has given in your life that is an indicator of which direction god will lead you in or, or there are many other things grace then um, the experiences of your life then uh, god may you know give you a prophetic word vision all those things will kind of direct you in that path uh so to the best of your ability you try to understand all these things and then as per what you are convinced in your heart you start to pray and say god you know use me in this ministry and there's nothing wrong with that if at all that's not what god wants for you i'm sure he will reveal it to you in some way or the other but coming to this point um blessy prophetic ministry or music ministry one aspect here is you can be in the music ministry and yet you can have a prophetic ministry it's possible okay uh, because uh, the prophetic or um, prophecy is a spiritual gift that all of us can flow in all of us so it does not have to be only for one person who is um, you know okay anyway i won't get into it we have an entire course on understanding the prophetic but my point is you can be in music ministry and yet you can have a prophetic ministry you can have both very powerfully together okay fine um there's a question here i hope it has answered your question okay lucy um says what must be the reason for delay in answering our prayers when we pray for years over the purpose when there is faith and belief so what could be the reason for delay so if we have applied everything um so so lucy we know it's god's will we are praying in faith um we can check right we can check what is it that we are praying which is not yet aligned to what god wants to do so keep checking keep asking that question if you identify something it can be as simple as 
pray in the name of Jesus. Maybe that's what we missed. Something tiny here or there. Okay, so we can make that adjustment. Now, if there is nothing like that and you're assured that, yes, my prayer is correct. It is in the will of God. I'm praying it the right way. Then just wait. Don't give up. It's just a matter of time. Because as I shared earlier, some things take time. They may even take, you know, we, we think, yeah, God will do this in two years. But who knows? It may take 10 years. It may take longer than that. But the important thing is, don't give up. Wait till it is fulfilled. Okay, I hope um, it answers your question. Okay, sure. So if um, there is no particular reason, then we just have to wait um, and try. Like I, I'll tell you, um, maybe with regard to the church, right? Like we are working ministry and we're trying to build our church and it's taking a long time for the church to actually develop. Persevere, don't give up because that's the vision we are convinced. God has called us, God has given the vision, it will happen. Uh, be persistent, but at the same time, we can be very practical also. We can ask questions. What are some things that maybe I should do differently? We are not saying change the core things that you believe in, but some simple little things here and there, isn't it? Like nowadays, people, there's the option of uh, um, uh, technology, uh, live streaming. Maybe we can just improve our methods and improve some of those minor things here and there which may bring a better um, outcome or a result. So even some practical things we can do to see those improvements. Okay. And I think with that, we will just wrap up for today. Um, let's close with a word of prayer. Could somebody go ahead and lead us in prayer? Yeah. Who would like to pray? Sister, Sorry? can I pray? Yes, yes, sister, please go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for inspiring us in detail about how to pray, my master, according to your will, to, according to your word, and to wait on you, my master, patiently, Lord. Thank you for all that you have taught us, and thank you for sister who has explained it so well, my master, Lord. We want to grow in your word, knowledge, and an understanding to love you and to serve you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there are uh, two more questions, I suppose. Uh, if you don't mind, we can take it up in the next um, class. Lucy says, like we had shown doubt or unbelief in earlier days when God blessed us with it. That's because God is sovereign. God is so good. Uh, even though there is no faith. Remember, we discussed about it. There are times that he will just go ahead and bless us. Okay, so the other questions, let's take it up in the next class. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye for now. God bless. Thank you very much, ma'am.